Hey, Rob here. We're going to check out another first wave image comic book from one of the image founders, Wetworks number one. Um, I was so excited for this. I have to say, ultimately, it ended up kind of being a little bit of a disappointment for a big reason that a lot of them were. But at the time, I was so excited for this. Wills Portacio, as an artist, the designs he come up with, these soldiers, like these soldiers with this shiny golden skin. Like, what is that about? This cover is a triple. Um, what a great, all these big badass guys carrying all kinds of cool tech and guns and things like that. This is great. Um, the thing with Wetworks that was kind of interesting is that it was very late to the game. All the original image guys got out there and had their books put out, and this one was delayed quite a bit. And what happened was, and a lot of people seem to kind of forget this and blame the artist for being slow and lazy and didn't care, something to that effect. When issue two came out, the artist put um, a big, uh, he, had a, he wrote in the book explaining what was going on in his life, and basically it said that his sister had died. And so that kind of screwed up his life. Like comics didn't matter. His sister, who I, I he must have been very close to, had died. And so that put comics work on the back burner. And so he was delayed for a long time. I hear something like that. I'm like, dude, you take all the time you need. That is horrible. Comics will wait. The, the fan bases will always be here. You come back and do comics when you want to, when you're ready. Give us the book and the work that you're ready to show us. Go handle your family business. I seem to hear a lot of people talk about this book and they always bitch about how late it was. Dude, there is a reason. So do us a favor and shut the fuck up with your bullshit. Let the guy have um, a moment to deal with his family issues. But the book comes out. Artistically, it's great. Story-wise, like I was saying, what is the problem? Um, the problem is, as happens with so many of these first wave image books, is that they're trying to write a big, deep, thoughtful action story. And these guys are not writers. And it just comes across, across as cliche or boring or overblown and overdone and self-important and not as good as they wish that the, it was. Now, I'm no writer. I'm not trying to say I could do any better, but that's not the point. You can critique anything and you can look back at it and go... Man, you guys are saying a lot. Like, it's set up. It's a first issue. we got to get set up on what's going on. But to me, I mean, I think a lot of people, when you look back at these, you're like, what are you talking about? I fucking love that book. I loved Cyber Force number one. I loved Wildcats number one. I think a lot of it is just that nostalgia memory of how fun they were, how exciting it was. You're picking up a new book and the paper's glossy. The colors are vibrant. It's your artist that you love drawing the shit they want to draw. And you just kind of maybe remember the big awesome scenes, but the little minutia of the story, oh my God, it's, it's so much of it is not that great. Generically, basically what we're saying is these are just a group of soldiers. They're on their way to go fight some bad guys. Um, they are going to be doing a lot of talking, but you know, you're trying to get some characterization and explain who these people are. Uh, this artist, again, Wills Portacio, he draws technical stuff really, really well. He also is known for doing really interesting panel layouts. This is sort of showing it. It's not the most, the best example, but we will see some. Uh, you know, with like having like dead space around the borders and inserting little panels over others. It's an interesting way to transition for this double page spread here, here, to get this little one to transition over to here and here. Um, I always thought that this panel this face and that red color looked really good anyway he's the leader there's a bunch of soldiers we're going to start some shit washington dc uh bad guys uh, generals villains uh, story okay whatever this was awesome i would love to see the original artwork on this i don't know if it shows up very well but the borders around these panels is like this little finely drawn technical little doodads and bits and pieces of tech and stuff. Like, that would have taken so damn long to draw. It makes it look great, but he went for it. And I love this shot of this figure, especially that robotic arm. 
you never see a robotic arm like that, just a small spindly kind of couple of pipes. You know, you see just a regular human arm with like silver sheathing, a little gun mounted on it. Like that, that's really badass. And again, that's an example of his kind of unique page layout. That looks great. Back to the soldiers. They flew to this island. They're talking. They're looking. They're searching. Um, someone's looking for something. They go into some place. There's bad guys. There's monsters. It's shocking. What's going on? What is all this stuff? Uh, I don't know. They end up in this room where they find these big tanks, kind of like the thing that looks like Luke Skywalker was getting healed in and Empire Strikes Back. But it's filled with this golden goo, and they're trying to figure out what it is, what's going on, what is this stuff. Another example of his great panel layouts uh, have these open panels where the characters are standing there, not confined by some borders. Looks great. And this is one of the things that this book started doing really well. The artist was really into the computer coloring and wanted to push the boundaries of what computer coloring could do. And so this, this guy here, I always thought this drawing, that face, that profile... The shadow and the lighting, that looks so damn good. Uh, sorry, the light kind of reflects off on this, so I gotta pay attention, but that is a beautiful face. But he's looking in this tank and he's seeing this golden goop and he's like, it's cutting edge biotechnology, a biometalloid compound saturated and controlled by nanotech wetware. Somebody here has actually succeeded and created a non-carbon based life form, sir. So it's a na it's basically liquid metal life. And it's this cool gold. The colors, man, look at that. This golden look. They're staring at it. I wonder how that's going to come into play. So they're staring at it. And there's this grating that this character is watching through. And she shoots at, at them. What does she do? She blows up the tank in front of them. And the golden goop flies out on top of the just the one guy who is looking at it and it covers, it goes in inside him. Like it's going down his throat. It's just covering him a hundred percent. Um, they're like, the shooter's gone. We don't know what's going on, but here's the guy. And now he's just this big golden figure. And they're trying to get him like, think, focus, concentrate, like open your mouth so you can breathe. And eventually he, you know, gets his mouth open. Ah, he can breathe. Okay. You were alive, but what's going on? Um, you know, I don't know bad guys show up and start shooting at him and you find out that this golden goop that's on them now this guy's getting riddled with bullets just bouncing off him like he doesn't feel it so they slaughter all the bad guys they find out that they're in trouble they're screwed they're trapped um what are we going to do boss we don't we how are we going to escape this we've been screwed over we've been ratted out boys well our leader of the team he's got a plan um shooting fighting um, they're trapped. They're, they're, they basically know they're going to die. And they're, the soldier, the leader, is like, we're not finished yet. The soldier's still packing some tricks. Meanwhile, the guy who got covered, he's out fighting these bad guys by himself because he can obviously take it. But um, big explosion, boom. Oh, shit. Here's the rest of the team. They covered all of them. Every one of them got the golden goop on them. Now they're a bunch of golden badasses guns and swords and they just proceed to chop the shit out of whoever these bad guys are i gotta be honest with you i don't know i don't care chop slice kill blood drenched fight fight kill maim murder murder death kill and then the big like double page splash i've talked about this before if you watch any of my bullshit you know we talk about that double page splash you got to bring your a game do your best some artists out there you know who they don't do it all the time he brought it here Love this. Again, the way that he draws this metallic texture, using these lines to give it this sheen, it looks metallic and you cover it in this golden color. Um, and I think it just looks great. And especially this bottom panel, the way that he draws this, the metallic look on his face, and then the lighting, having like this bright light here. I just, it looks so good. It looks, to me, it reads as very metallic. I especially love the mouth, the lips, and this chin. Really, really cool. Visually amazing. Um, bad guys that set him up, they find out things have gone 
Wrong. Oh, they're scramble the gunships. We've got to go kill the golden gooses. Big helicopter shows up and our guys are just kicking ass, taking names. They're badasses. They're a bunch of naked golden guys. Um, on top, in one of these helicopters, I guess you find out that there's this other character, this woman that's in here, and she reveals herself to already have the golden goop on her too, and she takes out the bad guys and takes over the helicopter. She's on the team of the other guys, but she's already got the golden stuff somehow. Why? Fuck, I don't know. She shoots the helicopter. She lands there. Um, she's introducing herself to them. They don't know who she is, but she's covered in the stuff. Hey, we, we should team up. We should go kick ass, take names. He's like, what do we got to lose? She says more than you could possibly imagine. Oh, my God. The drama. I am scared. We got to have some super drama going on here. But, and then, f fuck all this. I don't, I don't care what's going on. The, the book ended up having, like, some story with, like, vampires and monsters. I wanted to read about soldiers with guns and grenade launchers and knives fighting and kicking ass with their cool golden shit on them. Fight vampires, I guess, sure. It, it just didn't go any way that I thought that it was going to. And become, it became, it had some interesting parts. The golden stuff ended up like mutating some of them and changing them into re really weird things. So it, it did some different stuff, but I mean, there's issue two. There's a vampire. It's not a very scary vampire. I mean, I don't care. Um, there's a shot of the stuff that was coming out the time Gen 13 was about to come out. Man, that was going to be the hottest book ever. Wildcats animated series was coming out, and that sucked balls. So, if you can't tell by my way I reviewed this, I could not give him less a shit about the story. It was all the visuals, the art, the amazing way that this guy draws. He knew a perfect way to do some... He likes to draw big, strong guys and jackets and guns and tech and shiny metal and hot girls and buff dudes and monsters. But the story was just so overworked and so overblown. Like, it's just... I don't care. Uh, there's comics I've read years ago that I could kind of recite to you the basics of the story from memory, from reading it once or twice or a, a whole bunch of times because I read the story and absorbed it. This came out in 90 whatever, 92, 93, uh, 94. Yeah, he was really late to the game. I, I, I only know the most basic of the story and I don't care. And that's the problem with so many of the early image books. And again, if you love this book, did you or were you way into the story? Were you way into these guys and what they did and the vampires and the monsters and all that shit? Can you tell us what the basic plot was or was it just the visuals? I'm sure there's some of you out there that can, were totally into it. I get it. I'm not trying to take that from you, but this just did not work um, as something that you want to revisit and read. Like, what a great story it was. Just amazing visuals. It's just so visually beautiful. Um Maybe I'll see if I can't find some more of the subsequent books and look and see kind of where they went. But wanted to get I'm going to get in all the first wave image books. We got Wildcats to look at. We got Youngblood, and we've done plenty of Liefeld stuff. But we got to look at Youngblood. Uh, we looked at Shadowhawk. Uh, Savage Dragon is the best book out of all of these because that guy knew how to draw and how to write and how to tell a story. Um, we saw Spawn. Everyone knows Spawn. Everyone likes Spawn, but it's it's kind of has the same problem as this. A little more self-important on the story than it really had any. It was it was reaching farther. Its reach exceeded its grasp. But visually beautiful. So let me know what you thought about this. Did you like that book? What are your memories of it? Um, I don't have every any memories of it except the art. So that kind of is telling. Anyway, that's all I've got for you now. Thank you for watching. Catch you next.